In this video, I'm going to be going over all the software tools and the system that I like to set up in order to create all the plots and animations that I do for all the videos. And specifically, I'll be using the example of creating this constellation GIF that I've used in a few videos and is the background um, as of about a month ago of the videos that I have. So first, I like to start off with a text editor, and I don't like to use IDEs, something like a Spider or a Jupiter, because I feel like you lose a little bit of control of your computer, and you kind of lose, kind of, it's a level of abstraction that I don't want to take, because I feel like you're not really understanding what's going on under the hood, and I prefer just to have more control over the computer. So, because I have Windows 10, and I don't really like the command prompt either, you can also get a Linux subsystem with Windows 10, which gives you all the functionality that you would think of of a Linux terminal. So, I mean, ls, ll, um, let's see, you can do something like which Python 3, pwd, uh, chmod, all, all that stuff. So, basically, everything that you would expect out of a, Win or a Linux terminal, you can get out of this. So, who am I? Um, so I like to use that. And then for a text editor, I like Sublime. I think it's pretty powerful. It's nice. It's customizable. I just like it. And at this point, I'm pretty used to it. And I also occasionally I'll use Vim uh, if I ever just have some quick things to edit or something like that. Um, so if we go Vim, say the bash RC file, uh, bash RC, something like that, I'll usually use Vim. But if not, then I'll usually just go ahead and use Sublime. And then as far as actually being able to display things, because I'm using a Linux subsystem, in the bash rc file you have to do this export display equals colon zero uh, in order to set up kind of a graphical interface where to display things and then for that i use xming so xming i'll have a link in the description for xming but it's pretty much let's see if i can pull it up i can't really pull it up here but basically it's called xming and it's just that will pop up a window when you do like say matplotlib and you do plt.show you need to do this in order to actually be able to see anything so uh, go here, quit Vim. And then as far as Sublime, or actually let's go to the directory tree. So basically how I like to organize everything. So I have PWD, home. And if you do a, a Linux subsystem on Windows 10, in order to get to all your regular Windows 10 files, you have to do something like this. So CD or LS, MNT, C, which is your C drive, and then users, and then there. And that's how you get to actually where you see everything in Windows. So it's really hard to see. It's difficult to find um, where all the files are for the Linux subsystem when you use this, if you're trying to just find them in Finder using Windows. But basically, the way that I like to do set up everything, I'm going to make this bigger, is I like to give every single video its own directory. Um, these are all the videos that I've made since I've got this computer. So every single video gets its own directories, like numerical methods of Python 5 and orbital mechanics of Python 42, which I'm working on right now. So they all get their own directory, which we can also see here. So there's a nice feature of Sublime where you can just pull up any directory. So say sphere of influence one, I'm doing, it's not Apollo, but it's going to be Grail, but say the hyperbolic orbits, every Python script, just basically every video gets its own directory, which I think is kind of nice, a way to organize it. And for this case, um, for the introduction to the video series I have in Spanish, basically this is a constellation. That comment is wrong. Constellation. But basically, what I like to do is every video gets its own directory, and then I have a Python tools folder which contains all the general Python tools that I always import into any script that I use. So for the case of constellation, I want to use planetary data. Uh, spacecraft, animate orbits, and spice data, which are all found in the Python tools. So one thing that's important to note is from sys import path. This is very important because this is where, so if we were to print out path, this is where Python is going to look. Every single one of these is a directory that Python is going to look when you want to import something. So whenever you call import, Python is going to look in these directories to find what you're trying to import. So if right now I just say import planetary data, it's going to say no module found because and no path here is planetary data. But if I say uh, path dot append where my Python tools are. Now, if we see path at the end is where all my Python tools are this directory. And then, and then if we say import planetary data again, it's going to find it. And if we say planetary data, it's just some module that's located at that file. Same thing, we say import spacecraft. And then uh, spacecraft, it's just some module. 
So that's what I like to do for every single one of my scripts is just at the top from sys import path, append this directory. So then I can import all of my personal tools that I want to use for anything that I do. And that's kind of, I think it's a very convenient way of doing it because you can write some general tools that can be used for many different occasions, which in my experience is a better software practice than say creating a spacecraft class, putting it in this, and then copying and pasting anytime you want to use the spacecraft class again. This is just a more robust way of doing that. And if you have Windows 10 and want to do what I'm doing, but don't want to use the Linux subsystem, you can definitely use the command prompt. So once you download Python and make sure that it's added to your path, you can do something like this. So you can say that if you want to see everything in your path, you can say echo uh, percentage sign like that. So you can see this is your path when you're in your command prompt versus when you're in a Linux subsystem, you can say echo path and this will show. So basically this is everywhere, every directory that the the shell will look to when you type in a command so like pwd it'll look in one of these directories is a pwd uh, function so then the same thing you can do with path and if you say which so once you have python installed you have in your path you can just call python to get into the interactive version and then you can say where is this python so if you say where python it'll tell you where the actual python executable is which this directory uh, app data local microsoft windows apps update a local Microsoft Windows apps is here. So that's how you know that's where it found Python. And you can do the same thing with the Linux terminal. So you say which Python 3 uh, and then say like which Python 2, which since both are on here. And then that's how you know where the Python is coming from. And again, you can do the same thing. You just run Python on here, you know, Python and then um, import NumPy. Let's see, maybe I don't have it already installed. I do, yeah, so NumPy is just some module located at this place, basically. And I guess a sneak peek in, into how I make these animations. So basically, say I want to run this ground tracks, or not the ground tracks, the constellation uh, script. So I go Python 3 constellation, and it goes through all the orbits. So basically, this this file, what it's doing, it's importing spacecraft, import the animate, import the animate orbits function, and then furnish all the necessary uh, spice kernels that I need for this analysis. And then I have a range of argument of periapses, inclinations, and true anomalies. So for each one of those in a nested for loop. And again, because this is recording, this is running a bit slower than usual. Um, so for each one of those, just update the Keplerian orbital elements that you're passing into the spacecraft. And then create the spacecraft, propagate the orbit, calc DCMs, which I call direction cosine matrices, calculate all those append them to a list and then animate all this and how the animation is done is actually done in parallel and you can see that these aren't being saved in actual numerical or chronological order so zero one three two four six five nine seven it's because i'm doing this in a parallel process which is the way that i've implemented it in the animate orbits function where in this case you can use all the cores of your computer to do create all these images in parallel instead of creating them one by one by one. So it actually decrease the runtime by a lot by doing these in parallel. So you can see that these are not in order and they don't have to be, but you also have to account for that when you write that parallel uh, plotting function um, into Python because they're not gonna be executed in order. So you have to make sure they're all the same, which is why I have these file names where a bunch of zeros at the beginning. So they all stay in chronological order. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna run through the whole thing. Um, because it's just taking too long and especially because it's recording it's a bit slower another command p kill python so kill the process of python um, another thing that i like to use is top uh, to see if anything running is going on um, but besides that i also want to show one more thing so ls cpu um, is a command that you can lose and you can use in a linux terminal which will show you how many cpus well a bunch of information but most importantly how many cpus your computer has so your local computer has in this case i have eight cores in this computer so when i run that animate orbits function i can use all eight cores so eight images get created in parallel at a time which is again why they're not in order so overall, let me know if you have any questions about any of this. Um, I'm pretty open to answering because a lot of people have asked uh, questions in the comments about um, they're having different problems when they use IDEs like a spider or a Jupiter. And honestly, I haven't used them very much, so I can't comment too much, but I can show you the way that I do things. And I guess I've had a good enough amount of experience where I can help debug if you want to do it in a way where you use um, 
where you run everything through some sort of terminal, either command prompt or macOS terminal or another Linux terminal. So again, yeah, let me know if there's anything confusing um, in the comments, anything you want me to explain more, or uh, I think I'll also post some links and say how to download Sublime, how to download Python and all that stuff in a Windows system, because I believe for macOS, it is already downloaded. So that's pretty easy. Yeah, so again, let me know if there's anything confusing, anything else that you'd like to know about how I make these videos, and thank you for watching.